You know, there's a lot of age-old questions when it comes to animation. What would have happened if Wile E. Coyote caught the Roadrunner? What would happen if Elmer Fudd actually killed Bugs Bunny? What if Tom actually ate Jerry? Or what would have happened if Chloe got ran over and the series ended on a positive note for a change? With the exception of that last one, because of how well-crafted these shows are, you never want that to happen. The show makes the balances in a way that it's never too easy, or too boring, or too real, or too grim, despite these being very violent situations. And in 2021, I have no idea why Squidward doesn't just quit. Also, plug in my Reddit. <laughs> Gonna be dropping this and all of my future videos within my subreddit, alphaj.show slash reddit, or go into the description or pin comment, I'm putting it everywhere that I can. I've been here for years, and one of the reputation us animation reviewers have, especially towards this show, is that there is a tendency to make something more real or more grim than it is. So without any exaggeration, Squidward has a nightmare about the harsh realities of work and they let this scene play out. I never got my fries! Why doesn't my father love me? The idea of Spongebob annoying Squidward is essential to the show, but only with a catch. In nearly every case, from season 1 to 4, Squidward in some way, shape, fashion, or form did something to deserve it or over the course of time, played along in a way that didn't make it seem like a one-sided war. The Lost Mattress, Squidward tries to push Spongebob and Patrick into a junkyard with a guard work, but through their aloofness they knock the fence upside down and now Squidward is in there, perfectly fine. Employee of the Month Squidward and Spongebob are on the same level, so it's fun to watch them completely go at it trying to win this award. The Great Snail Race Squidward is very arrogant about his pet, which is the catalyst for Spongebob to train hard, and that puts a lot of pressure on Gary. Club Spongebob Spongebob and Patrick go along with things and don't take it seriously, which bounces off of Squidward taking it very seriously, and that makes for a fun dynamic. My point is that there is something there, and I'm sure there are post-sequel episodes where that is the case too. In fact, I talked about Jolly Lodgers a while ago in a Nickelodeon video, and in that video, I would say that Squidward had a leg to stand on and definitely tried to get away from Spongebob and Patrick, and ended up having fun in the end getting his revenge. To me, that's a fine episode because there is hope that you actually believe that Squidward isn't being held here hostage. But with episodes like this, how can you legitimately believe that Squidward is okay? Like I get it, it's a dream, and you know what, hold that thought about it being a dream. But when it comes to actually being entertained, combined with me knowing about this character and have watched the show for two decades plus at this point, this is not a problem of it being different but still good. To be genuinely educated on the other side, what part of episodes like this do you still find entertaining enough to enjoy? Is it that you don't take Squidward's life being a living hell seriously? Like you just don't care that things like this happen? And if that's the case, then why should I even care about this episode? If you were to believe that Squidward Squidward's character is meant to be in these positions, then what do you get out of this episode specifically that you didn't get out of the other 50 that do this exact same premise, this exact same execution, and this exact same ending? It's not even anger inducing, it's just sad both in and out of the story because in story I have to witness 11 minutes of a guy getting beat up and having everything taken away from him and out of story it seems like the staff have a fixation on writing these types of episodes when I think that they're talented and I think that Squidward has more things that he can do than default to these type of episodes. So please help me understand this. Don't just lay there. Clean up. Clean up. Clean up. So the common thing that comes up when talking about these Squidward episodes is that Squidward has done something to deserve this, and that's why all of this happens. Squidward hit a stop sign, so of course he spends the next 10 minutes getting annoyed to death by Spongebob. Squidward got a restraining order on Spongebob, so of course he spends the next 10 minutes being annoyed by Patrick. Squidward wanted to enjoy his Sunday alone, so of course he spends the next 10 minutes being annoyed by Spongebob and Patrick. As justified as some people think that this may be, and I am not of these people, those th three last premises actually 
actually really sucked. Something must have changed over the last 10 years because it seems like Squidward can do the tiniest thing and then that's the catalyst for everything else. Like Squidward can forget your sweet and sour sauce in your McDonald's Happy Meal and then get beat up for 20 minutes and no one thinks that that's nothing out of the ordinary. Like that's a legitimate episode. So like what has Squidward done in this episode to become the catalyst for everything that he's going to receive here? He fakes being sick to get out of work. <laughs> Too sick, eh? I got that cure for what ails you. Look, should Squidward call out sick? No, of course not. Obviously, he should honor the job that he has. However, that's like seeing a forest fire and putting out the fire for one tree. Like, if you actually think that him being sick is the catalyst and that he deserves it, you don't understand how far the issue is from that. Like, I'm talking about, like, it's this far. Like, do you hear how my voice sounds? It's this far. Looking at this as objectively as I can, it would have made more sense to the audience had Squidward called out for work when his workplace was just fine and he was just being lazy or thinks that he can outsmart Mr. Krabs, who has done nothing wrong to him in this episode. But the problem with this episode is that you cannot just call Squidward a lazy or no good slacker when you preface this call with Squidward having nightmares about the harsh realities of his job. When you link this scene with the rest of the 11 minute episode, there is a strong possibility that the audience would correlate the reason that he wants to leave with the trauma that he's facing, and a large part of your audience would empathize with Squidward rather than want to see Spongebob and Mr. Krabs mess that up for him. And given that a large portion of your audience has seen Squidward before and knows that his workplace isn't that far off from the dream that he had, and even within this episode, Squidward calls this a realistic, totally on point dream. Dream. And even if you still think that it's an exaggeration, hold that thought until the end of the episode. I have to say, I did skip over one portion before the call and that was Squidward and Patrick and this whole pastry thing. However, that brings me to another point. My strudel! It just tasted like pie to me. It's a strudel, you barbarian. Just look at those pastry layers. <laughs> You rarely, if ever, debatably get to see any of these other characters within this show feel any sort of pain or anything backfire as far as their actions within this episode. Anything that would cause them pain, they would shrug off, as I'll show you later on. Compare that to Naughty Nautical Neighbors, an episode where Spongebob and Patrick do annoy Squidward to the point of destroying his home, and within that episode, we've seen Spongebob feel the weight of having no friends and seeing how that actually affects him. We've seen Patrick literally take a giant rock to the top of his head. It was hilarious. And here, Patrick is just the glutton, full stop. Although I should probably count my blessings because this very well could have been Spongebob and Patrick annoying Squidward. So at least I can see the silver lining here. So Squidward, happy about his day off, unbeknownst to Krabs finding out, finds him at his door. And even though he insists that he'll be just fine, Krabs insists as well. Well, I wouldn't want to infect anyone, so you should probably go now. Oh, you are in no condition to be alone. That's why I brought you some help. Take one of these and call me in the morning. The doctor is in. And so the reign of terror begins. And what I found most interesting about this is that Squidward can't go, it's my house, you don't have control over me or my house off work hours. Like that idea doesn't work or my favorite, you're not supposed to think about that. So when not thinking about that, Squidward tries to power through his day by painting despite Spongebob being in his house, which obviously backfires because Spongebob is in his house. And you know what? This following joke isn't that bad. <laughs> Imagination, you're a helpless little baby. Gee, you're sicker than I thought. It's not the best, but it's not that bad. It's harmless, and it makes sense within the story. However, we both know it doesn't stop there. It never stops with the harmless stuff when it comes to the modern SpongeBob. The same joke happens again with the clarinet, in which Squidward and SpongeBob struggle with it. And I remember when I said something about something can happen to SpongeBob or anyone else, and they'll shake it off. But if it happens to Squidward, then it's like an actual thing. Look at this: clarinet goes into SpongeBob. No 
sells it, despite it looking pretty brutal. Clarinet goes into Squidward, giant struggle. He's very mad at the end of it. They write all of this exclusively for only Squidward to take any form of pain or hardship, and I sit here and think, that's kind of sad. I know they can do better episodes than this, and I've even seen episodes better than this. But they default to, Squidward wants a thing, Spongebob annoys him throughout the process, and nothing ever happens to anyone but Squidward. Squidward gets legitimately upset, and the world beats down on him for defending himself. It happens again with this fever thing, in which Squidward instructs Spongebob to look at a wall because his character has devolved into this form, and we get to something a little bit interesting here. Squidward throws the thermometer into the oven, and it gets the temperature higher than it is, classic cartoon thing to do, to full Spongebob, and this happens. <laughs> No, you buffoon! You're right, Squidward. I have been buffoon. <laughs> what? I've been treating the symptoms instead of the sickness! Like, yes, obviously the episode isn't going to have SpongeBob cut up Squidward, even though, why not at this point? Legitimately, why not at this point? Like, what part, like, what logical thing can you say here, in story, that can explain why he shouldn't at this point, or why he couldn't? But let me remind you, the only two options for Squidward that the episode makes it painfully clear as to what they are, is stay home and be majorly inconvenienced by SpongeBob, or go to work and be majorly inconvenienced by Spongebob, but also Mr. Krabs, the customers, and anything else that happens at the Krusty Krab. And is that fun? Like, is any of that fun? Like, if you were watching this show for the first time, and you couldn't look at other episodes that you might think are better, could you look at this episode? Would you consider watching the rest of this show based off of this episode? And do you think Squidward calling in sick makes the rest of this justified? Would you oppose possibly making Squidward fight a little bit and you know, succeed a little bit more? Is this entertainment to the standards that you would hold SpongeBob as a whole to? Like is is anything that I'm saying like out of the realms of like, that's too far, that's too much to ask for? There's usually a back and forth dynamic that makes sense. You genuinely don't believe SpongeBob and Patrick don't care for Squidward, and Squidward does play along a little bit more, but this, and that aren't the same dynamic. Here, Squidward is legitimately, in story, suffering from the lesser of the two evils. No, um, um I already know what I have. It's, uh, uh acute uh, spotting, uh, scorborinus. Acute spotting scorborinus! And turns out, not only is that a real thing, but the treatment is extra painful, even when he mentions another disease that's even more painful. A lot of people would say that all of this started with good neighbors. The idea that there is this concept of Squidward not doing anything to deserve what he gets, trying to get away from the perceived good duo, only to get worse and worse treatment, with Squidward actually calling them awful and the worst, and when he finally gets so upset that Spongebob and Patrick finally get it and he tries to enjoy his Sunday, he can no longer have Sundays according to the end of the episode. And as overhated as that episode is, I wouldn't call that dud episode the beginning of the end, because within that same season we'd have good episodes that involve Squidward. The beginning of the end as far as Squidward's character would come a lot later when they've normalized this. Us being able to see this as weird within a season means that it wasn't normalized at that point. Found it! Now, let's get to the curing, shall we? Done. Don't be silly, we've just begun. This all brings me to my original point that I said within the beginning of this video. What if any of these cartoons were so one-sided and undeservedly malicious as this? What if Wile E. Coyote got beaten up and just thrown around when he wasn't doing anything to the Roadrunner? What if the Roadrunner was just doing it just because? What if Bugs Bunny was annoying Elmer Fudd intentionally and immediately and when he gets upset, Elmer Fudd just gets beaten down by every other character within Looney Tunes? What if Jerry tormented Tom so much that Tom decided to move out 
and even then, Jerry continued when Tom did absolutely nothing in the episode to even warrant that. How come cartoons much older than this get that? Like go look at shows like Pinky Elmira in the Brain or Coconut Fred. Shows where they just beat down on a certain character or pair of characters or in Coconut Fred's case, literally everyone there. They aren't exactly known for lasting long or having the biggest fan base. And there's a reason why. A lot of people don't like this. Seeing a character that they want to empathize with never win. Because don't get it twisted, Squidward's not going to win here. Squidward's going to barely survive just to do it over again. And like the title, I must ask, then why doesn't Squidward just quit at this point within the story? So you can't say things like, because then the show is over or you need a character like X. No, within the story, within what you see in this episode, why would Squidward, who is self-aware enough to know that all of this sucks, why wouldn't he quit his job? What kind of person would go through all of this and then go back to work the next day? Well, Mr. Squidward, feeling better after your sick day? You might say that. <sighs> oh, he's glorious. Oh wow, they brought back a reference that I know because I watched the episode where this occurred. I'm supposed to like this. And put all of that to the side, shove that up your blowhole, because I have a reference as well. It's called Pet Sitter Pat. Both there and here, you portray the episodes to have a character get beaten up, tossed around, and be miserable, and then you try to pull the rug from underneath and go, actually, he just turned out to be just fine. And you could have brought back the live action SpongeBob crew. There's nothing you could have done. There's no one you could have brought here to excuse the last 10 minutes of what we saw. This isn't a feel-good moment when you spend the initial time really hammering it home that Squidward life sucks. Just because you showed in the scene after that he was just fine or all of this was beneficial doesn't mean that it really was. It just means that you're forcing the writing to work. However, again, this isn't entertainment. I don't know what this is, but it's not entertainment. But gather around everyone, let's get to the grand finale. So remember when I said that some people may say that each episode is in a vacuum so you can't draw previous connections to other episodes? Or maybe that some people may think that Squidward was overreacting to his dream and that it was exaggerated. So even if we were to disregard continuity, even if we were to say in the beginning that it was just a dream, and even if we were to say that Squidward was overreacting, what he dreamed about and what he said was realistic and on point. It turned into reality. He couldn't have been any more right about this. So literally, literally, he was stuck between two evils and he experienced both evils. You know, there are times when the episodes that I talk about on this channel are just boring or meh or mediocre or underwhelming or, you know, even not for me. This, this is truly abhorrent. Like this is quite possibly like the worst SpongeBob episode I've seen in a long, long time. And you know, it's not hyperbole because I never say that. Like I'm not even that type of person to really hate on the new. A lot of times I say it's just fine, but it's been a long, long time since I've saw just like the worst kind of episode. This is the worst type of episode. And I think this probably might even be the worst episode I'm going to review this year. I can't see anything else being much worse than this. Like this isn't even me overreacting, just what other show, like Spongebob is literally the only show where there are fans out there who tolerate this type of stuff. Like go to my track history of the last 50 videos that I did. There's never been a time besides the Coconut Fred video where like you would sit there and you would see a character go through this and people think that that's just fine. I don't get it. If I was in a room where this was written, I would have torn up the script or in this case because of the time that we live in deleted from everyone's Dropbox. And I would have had everyone start over and I mean start over so when I say that I mean look over every single script starting with help wanted this is garbage I'm done talking about it join the reddit thank you for watching take care I'll foul.